Hey, all right. We are back for another edition of Life Lesson Live with the crew. Hey, man, we got Justin Cross with Stephanie Monique in the room with us today. And all of you that are going to join in on Facebook, remember, hey, man, you can join in the conversation. That's what we want you to do. We're just here to uh, have a conversation because we believe conversations birth new seasons. And so you can join in by uh, getting on Facebook Live uh, on our Facebook page, GP Ministries. And uh, comment in the comment section. And we see you live, right on time, in sync with what's going on here. We communicate with you, um, post your your questions up on there. And listen, I want to encourage y'all because I know there's questions and there's comments. Don't be ashamed. You know, y'all know y'all got faith pages if y'all ghosting somebody or whatever. So use your faith page. I don't know what you got to do, but you, use your use your your you know. <laughs> You know, we got two, three identities out there on social media. Use that one. Amen. So nobody know who you are and all of that. The main thing is this, guys, that we talk, that we answer and feel some questions. This is a no judgment zone. We're not being critical. We are not judging anybody. We're here to, uh, because we want everybody to have a great life, have success. That's what we've been talking about, defining success. We just happen to get in this vein on relationships. And I believe the thing that that can hinder you the most in having an amazing life full of joy and peace and love is a wrong relationship. Mm. A wrong relationship can take you further than you want to go, keep you long, you want to stay, and cost you more than you want to pay. Woo! Man, you're talking about hindering your your ability to fulfill your God-given calling and purpose and to achieve the uh, the exploits that you could be committing, wrong relationships would do that. You mess your heart up, um, just so many different types of things. And again, guys, we're not throwing no stones. We're not yeah. pointing the fingers. We just got to talk about this. Mm-hmm. Uh, so listen, I want Justin, Stephanie to get in there. We're going to be talking about orders and protocols, marriage, friendships, uh, dating, those types of things. And we want to hear your questions and, and answer your questions. We don't know everything. But that which we know we're willing to share, and that's what we don't know in the twins us. Amen. We'll go seek it out. We have people in our lives that got more and more experience even than we do. No more than we do. But the sum total of who we are together, I believe we can solve some problems. God, I really, really do. With the help of the Holy Spirit, the Word of God, we can get this thing together. Y'all believe that? I do. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. Come on. Come on. Introduce yourselves to everybody. Hey world, I'm Stephanie Monique right here in Tupelo, Mississippi, um, educator, mentor here, um, a sister, a friend, a daughter, all that good stuff. <laughs> good afternoon. My name is Justin Crosby from Aberdeen, Mississippi. Uh, don't mind me. I'm just here for the community. I'm, just, I'm, I'm here for the communion. So, uh, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm here for the juice and the crackers. So uh, let's go ahead and get going. <laughs> Amen. Well, one of the things we started out with is we said, listen, if you're not dating without without a purpose, if you're not dating with a purpose, there's no purpose in dating. And uh, there's protocols of dating. Uh, and we mentioned those five protocols, those five uh, that order is attraction and, mm-hmm. and uh, friendship, emotions, commitment, and then intimacy or the consummation of, a, of, a, of something we've determined as God and it is for a lifetime. You know, we start doing things and, and it is just for events. And then we get all entangled. We get ungodly soul ties going on. Uh just so many things happening. And we've hit a lot of that. We've talked about the difference between lust and love. We need to be able to to know the difference between them. You know, lust is, is, and love has the same definition pretty much, having a strong desire. Wow. Uh, the only thing is, is that lust is about the flesh, but love is about uh, uh, destiny. Okay, it's, it's God's will. So um, we talked about attraction. Okay, attraction, uh, either physically, spiritually, um, psychologically, uh, mental uh, capacity. Uh, there has to be some type of attraction. Uh, but then it can't just be on a physical level. Teach Bishop. Sometimes that's what's happening. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. 
and that physical level. Uh, and, and it's okay if it's just physical in the beginning, but if you follow a protocol, uh, you know, hey, this is nice looking guy, this is nice looking lady. I like to get to know her. I like to get to know him. Then we're gonna stay in the friend zone. Okay, Bishop. She right. stay in the ship of being friends. Okay. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Oh, I love this. Yeah, this and this way you get to know one another. You get to find out how a person thinks, the way they feel about so. What are their convictions? Um, you know, one thing I inserted into this is is that until you know the love of God, you don't know how to love and how to be loved. That's good, Bishop. And all of us want to be loved. Let's just let's just get down to it because it's an innate thing that God put in all of us: love, significance, worth, and security. Um, but when I didn't have the capacity to love like I needed to to be a husband and, and the father that I am and the grandfather I am now, until I came into the knowledge of Christ and comprehended the love of God that He had for me. Uh -huh. And so I think that there's a lot of misunderstandings about those types of things. And, and we got to talk about God is love. We did first John four, six through eight talks about that, you know, just for a reference point of where we got that from. And to, to know love, to know God's love, you then learn how to love and how to be loved. And sometimes I think we think, um, uh, because someone need me or desires me that they love you. Mm. And that's not necessarily the case. Come on, uh, Bishop. It'll be just for instant gratification or satisfying some need. Um, I'm just at this place in life. I don't want you to need me. I want you to want me because you've come to know me to a in a in a in a in a, in a way that you see my value. Right. That's good. You honor and you respect me. It's not just a fleshly desire. So I, I've just said a whole lot. Y'all come on there and put some, put some, add some stuff to that, or, or go where you need to go. We're here to talk. We're here to talk. Ladies first. Ladies first. Okay. Yes, well, I, we're just gonna jump on in, Bishop. I love that you keep reminding us that if there is no um, purpose in dating, if we're not dating with intentions of, um, you know, our purposes being merged together or destinies being merged together, then what are we really doing? Uh, and I think that that's really important too, because <clears throat> you said something in your opening statement about just connecting with a lot of people. And I use that word connect because um, we adults here, but you, you know what I'm saying, connect. Uh, we mm -hmm. connect with a lot of people and um, you get your heart in trouble um, and, and you develop soul ties and things like that. And so I think sometimes we um, we we maybe set ourselves back or or not really allow ourselves time to really mature and really focus on our identity and who we are mm -hmm. in order to present, um, you know, ourselves uh, and, and really be <laughs> um, whole in a relationship. Uh, and I think that that's really important, too. So I love that fact that that we are talking about it and really getting an understanding um, about the purpose of a relationship. I, I think sometimes we get we watch TV too much and we Come fall on. in love with these lullabies and these, um, you know, portraits of what love or what marriage is and the significance of having someone in your, you know, in your life as far as a relationship. So I just think that that's important. Um, you know, me for myself personally, I know that um, I needed time. Like uh, I've, I've been in, in, in a marriage and, uh, and I had some things in my heart and I had to get myself together and get myself straightened out. And so there's just some things that we experience because we don't wait, we're not patient enough or because we jump the gun too soon. And then we do um, consummate something that's not yet established. And I think you know, we did say something. I, I, I just, I, this point just hit me. So because we talked about this, lust can't wait and love will wait. Love can. Yes, sir. Love, love will. You know, and, and so I didn't mean to cut you off, but it just it just hit me like a lightning bolt there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And yeah. I, I, that's really good because 
I mean, not only for us, you know, in our adult life as well, but even for our youth, you know, making sure that we teach, um, you know, the importance of purity and waiting um, and getting yourself established, um, you know, knowing who you are, not focusing on your flesh. I think some of us have experienced some things before we were supposed to experience them. And I mm. hope, that, you know, we, we've opened the door to some things and we were never meant to really experience those things or know those things. I think the older people call your Pandora's box. was. That's it, Dad. Come on, Pandora's box. Yes. Come on, come on. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. and, um, and 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 just, you know, when you really understand that, you know, you you start making better decisions. Um, you know, as we even talk about these relationships, I think that it's important also to not leave this concept out, um, having relationship with yourself. Yeah. And and we ain't talking about no, 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 you know. Right. I'll say it, we talk, you know, we, we're not talking about self gratification. We're, we're not talking about that. Okay. We're talking about Getting in touch with the real you. you Understanding okay. you. You got to know. Because we said this, a wrong view of yourself will create wrong relationships. That's it. That's it. You don't even know you yet. You, you're not conscious of who you are, why you exist. Uh, you know, you don't even understand sometimes even how you communicate, how you receive and how you how you transmit. I mean, right. communication frequency is a major breakdown in relationships. And if you don't build a friendship with someone, you don't know how they receive. You don't know how they transmit. Um, and we're talking about communication frequency. You don't know if they're kinesthetic, if they if they sense things, or they're they're a very uh, emotional person. And I'm not talking about unstable emotions or emotional mm -hmm. instability. They just feel. They're a feeler. And yeah. so to communicate with them, you got to make them feel what you're saying. We said it for a long time. You feel me? You feel me? But we didn't even know what we were saying. It was just That's some good. slang that we were using. But right. some people really do need to feel it. You know, they, they really do. do. They need to feel it in order to get it. And uh, I've seen so many people say, they just ain't listening to me. I said, well, do you know how they how they hear? That's so pot. That's so That's good. Mm -hmm. Good. Do you know how they hear? Do you know how they understand? You no, know, even the scripture tells us, Paul told us in Ephesians 3 that he was praying that we would comprehend the breadth, the width, the depth, and the height of his love. And then we'll be able to experience the fullness of God. I don't believe until we really come to know uh, ourselves and spend time in friendship, getting to know one another, that we can really experience the maximum potential of two amazing lives, two purposes of being on the earth coming together and this potential maximizing it becomes a benefit to everybody that's in your life. Y your children benefit. I mean, how many times are we messing up young people's lives? They have a wrong perspective on marriage and relationships to where they do, don't even want it anymore. Just doing all the entire thing because two people came together, had no business being together, doing something they had no business doing. Now they created someone that they can't take responsibility for, don't know how to nurture them, don't know how to care for them. And now you got a generations of, of young people out here that hadn't been parented, hadn't been loved. Hadn't hadn't had the right vision in front of them. And and so it's happening too much, y'all. And we gotta just say this. We gotta talk about it, guys. We gotta talk about it. We gotta talk about it as a culture of people because you know they got statistics on us. You know, this child is like this because they come from a one parent home. The oh, child and, and please hear me, single parents. I love y'all. Y'all are doing a major job. That's not what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying that <clears throat> we gotta be more responsible. And so we start talking about dating. We start talking about marriage. This is a big responsibility, mm -hmm. man. It's a big responsibility. It's a huge responsibility. Can I tell you something else? If you're talking about having intercourse with someone that has a potential to create a child, that's a huge responsibility. Yes, Do you sir. hear me? We cannot treat these things so casual. We can't treat them so casual. So let's be responsible. Yes, Amen. Sir. Let's be responsible. We just said a lot. Just you didn't get a chance. Come on, step in here, man. I, I, I get to flowing, man. And I, 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 I'm full. I'm full on this, man. It's a burden in my heart. Bishop, I told you, I, I'm here for the juice and the crackers. I'm here. Uh, <laughs> what, what I, what I love, what I'm hearing is, is we keep hearing a theme: friendship, relationship, yeah. 
proper building. And so, but what I keep coming back to is the last four letters in all those words, ship, mm -hmm. right? You're trying to go somewhere. Ship is how you travel, right? So I was thinking there and, and what came to me was, uh, what are the major parts of a ship, right? So the first one, I went and did my, my homework. So the major parts of most ships, an anchor, a bow, an accommodation, a deck, and the ship's hull or ship's heart. Mm -hmm. So you go through those things in a relationship, in a friendship that has got to be anchored in something. Most of us try to go and find friends and we use things that hold no real weight. Mm. You cute, or I like what you have to say. It's a flesh context. You, your friendship has to be able to stand what you're trying to go into. An anchor keeps things at bay so they don't wash away. You know, I've, and my real friendships, we don't always agree. And right. sometimes we have to come back to the center of what anchors our relationship, what anchors our friendship. When, we, when you think about a boat, Right. Uh, well, uh, well, it's the same spelling as B.O.W. Well, I think I hear the word bow mm -hmm. uh, what have you. you bow when you're in worship or uh, what have you. So uh, what does that mean? Yes, your relationship must be something that you have worshiped God about. Let's yeah. be honest. Are we talking to God about the people that we want in our Come lives? Come on, sir. Come on. <laughs> We're not doing it because we know the answer already. You're, you're friends with someone that you know you wouldn't walk in the church with. <clears throat> You're friends with someone Ooh. you know you wouldn't want Bishop to meet. Ooh. Come on now. Friends with someone you know that you that you know you act different around. Your countenance changes. Who you worship changes because Ooh. you can't worship the real and true God around that person because it would alter your friendship because you're on Ooh. different pass they say all right juice and crackers come on man so again the, the accommodation in relationships in friendships you have to accommodate for the other person you know what else you demanding? oh you thought just a second and that indicates that your relationship with god is off so yes. you ain't in a position to develop another friendship or another right. relationship Come on, I'm, go ahead, man. Well, well, you, well, well, well to your point, Bishop, the reason you go back to what you said, the reason you haven't got to be friends with that person in the mirror first is because if you can't accommodate that person, mm. if you can't look in the mirror and work it out with that person, then how do you know how to be a friend? Some wow. of us, some of us are false friends because we have ideals that we have not even made in ourselves. We have viewpoints we have not even taken into ourselves. Mm -hmm. So then the next part of the of the ship is a deck. Well, the deck is a big part of the cruise ship where everything is seen. How exposed are you in your friendship? How are you hiding things? Are you keeping things away? Because again, most of marriages are failing because you're waiting until a year after I put a ring on to show me your problems. Oh. You start uncovering stuff. You start removing stuff. You start showing me issues that you had because what you were really doing was showing me a false narrative. Okay. You sold me a bill of goods. In other words, the friendship I thought I had was fictitious because that person never existed. Mm. You're, 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 there was no exposure. And then so now you get down to the ship's hull or the ship's heart. If, some, if you don't know your friend's heart, if you don't know what makes them tick, if you don't know what moves them, motivates them, makes them want to be the worshiper they should be, if you don't know their motives in life, if you don't, if all you know is that they make you feel good. Uh oh. All I know is it's Friday and he bought a bottle of Marlowe and it's cold outside. Marlo, I don't even know what Marlo, that is. Come on. And it's cold outside. Wow. And he wants to love basketball for the 300th time. And he got googly eyes and I got googly eyes and everything is in the carnal sense. Yet you don't know the heart that person may have. And okay. you are willing to do something in which you may have children just to find out later that this person has a grievous heart. And now oh. you have to worry about your child mm. carrying the heart of someone you never knew.
You wow. have built a ship that's going nowhere. Whoa. I, I had to just say that. Again, I'm here for the juice and crackers. Hey, go ahead, Bill. <laughs> what is it, juice and crackers sitting on so good? <laughs> he said, oh, that juice is sweet. <laughs> Amen. Hey, man, we just, we just got to be real with it. If you, you don't get to be mad because you made wrong decisions. You, you don't Ooh, get to blame everyone good. else. That's Because good. everything you did, you did knowingly. You know, or what now you went over there knowingly. You again, relationships, good or bad, are built. Yeah. So they have your signature on them. You you can talk about him or her all you want to, but it was built with four hands, not two. Here's something that happens when you develop friendship. This is what the scripture says. This is the book of wisdom, Proverbs 17, 17. A friend loveth at all times. So you know that this relationship can go further to the place of covenant and friend and and and, and eternal or 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 life lasting and sustainable has some substance. When, as you said, man, my friends, we don't always agree, right. but we go back to our foundation of why we're friends. We care about one another. We honor one another. We respect one another mm -hmm. and we can continue the relationship. Mm -hmm. Okay. And when you hadn't, when you're talking about dating and talking about marriage and you don't even know why we should even be together. Why should we be together? Is this going to glorify God? Why, why should we be together? Is there something bigger than us? Because if your why isn't big enough, you're not going to do enough. That's good. Mm. You're not going to you're not going to you're not going to be committed. You're not going to sacrifice. You're not going to grow. You're not going to to do what you need. You're not going to pray. As Justin said, you're not going to pray. You're not going to go to God to get the answers. You're just going to do what makes you feel good or 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 brings about some relief. You know, I, well, let's get a divorce. Right. Okay, you're just trying to get some relief rather than deal with your insufficiencies um, and, 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 and come to the place of loving unconditionally. The scripture said in Proverbs 17 that a friend loveth at all times. Oh. Come on. At Bishop, all Bishop, times. Bishop, let me hop in right there. Just one thing. One of the things that, that the Lord has given me is, is that I'm hearing a lot when people are upset. Bless you, Bishop Ramsey. Um, everyone loves to pass around blame when the ship begins to leak. <laughs> but understand, this is what I'm learning in life, even in my own relationship. Someone, one, someone can have a blame, but everyone has a role. Mm -hmm. So keep in mind, even when someone's not doing anything, and and, and, let, and let's say someone was someone was unfaithful. Uh, let's say someone didn't do the right things or what have you. Uh, my sister just said that, you know, she has experience in marriage or what have you. Now, while I don't know the circumstance, what I do know is someone may have a blame, but everyone had a role in that relationship. Mm -hmm. That's and right. so, like you said, we, we try to use things like divorce and separations to erase that. But you may not have done necessarily a wrong, but did you carry out your role? Did you do everything in the context of the scriptures from the beginning to ensure what you were doing was built to last? And if you didn't, then we got to talk about the role that was missed, the opportunity that was missed to build the ship correctly. Well, I think, again, I agree. What's the purpose of the ship? If there's no purpose for the ship, we don't need to build the ship. We need to find the ship that needs to be built. Mm. There's going to be, listen, I told you, I, I shared this with you. Whatever God ordains, there's grace and there's an anointing that will sustain it. The grace will be there, the ability of God, the 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 uh able to deal with one another's insufficiency because none of us are perfect. None of us, none of us. And when I'm talking about perfect, I'm talking about we, we got some flaws. We got some yeah. things, you know, we got a little, little quirks. We got little things That's right. you know, that, that we do that, man, you with the wrong person, 
uh, man, they'll, they, 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 you'll want to get a divorce because you done put the bread back in the bread box, you know. <laughs> Come on, you understand what I'm saying? That's but true. you know what, grace will do, grace will be like, my baby, always leave that bread out. Let me put this bread up. Come on, and I know it. that she's gonna leave the bread out when she make the bologna sandwich. Come on now, so there ain't no need of me because. Our purpose for being together is greater than the bread being left out of the bread box. Mm. I'm going to address that. I'll put the bread away. I'll buy the bread, buy the bologna, come and I'll put the miracle whip in there or whatever else she want on it. But my baby mm. not going to put the bread back in the bread box. But our purpose is greater than her not putting the bread back in the bread box. Teach this up. She'll never fold the clothes. I'll fold the clothes because Come us on. being together is good. She put them in the washing machine. Mm. Come on. Teamwork makes the dream work. We find excuses to annihilate a greater purpose. But Bishop, you when you don't know who you are or when you haven't discovered that grace or walked in that experience of dying to your flesh and dying to your will specifically because marriage you Thanks become down. one high school high school friend <laughs> marriage you become one and so when you go through the process of becoming one and learning um i, I think i read this post a couple of days ago learning to um to to win the battle and not just the individual war yeah. um you know that takes that season that takes right. um love that takes God in order for you to do that because you are loving your wife as Christ loved the church. And so again, we're talking about experience and wisdom and being able to die to your flesh. Marriage is not just about uh, white picket fences and children and cooking breakfast in the morning and, and daisies. Uh, all well, of that's great. Because I don't have none of that. I ain't got none of that. <laughs> well, one of the other things, <laughs> Stephanie, is this. If I got my relationship with God and I and I, I start doing something that's not right towards my wife uh, or my future wife, in my time of relating with God, he will put me in check. You did that and yes, you sir. need to fix it. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Hello. That's it. Yes, sir. You know, but when you don't have a relationship with God. You can't receive that correction or to see things from another perspective. See, sometimes we think because we're doing something because she didn't put the bread away, it's taking away from me because I'm putting the bread away. Or she didn't fold the clothes, it's taken away from me because I folded the clothes. But the two shall become one. And see, you don't have a good revelation of what that oneness is sometimes. Right. Come on now. See, right. that oneness is, is that she put them in the washer and I got them out the washer. See, that's mm. the two of us doing something, accomplishing a goal. See, it's the small foxes that spoil the vine. Yes, sir. That's good. Come on now. Come on. Mm. You you turn, yeah. you turn, you put the meatloaf in the oven and I take it out the oven because you a burning. Hmm. Come on now. And you you in divorce court because you burnt the meatloaf. Come on, Bishop. <laughs> Teach she now. got it started, mixed it up, seasoned it up, got all of those things done. Come on. Uh, Y'all understand what I'm saying? Yes. I mean, these are the small foxes that spoil the vine because you don't see any greater than where you presently at. You lack vision, sir. You lack vision, oh, ma'am. And my. if you will build a friendship, you can begin yes. developing relationship that casts vision that can see further than where you presently are today. Yes, you sir. Know? And, and when you don't spend no time building no friendship, you don't know what, how a person thinks. You don't know how a person mm. sees what they see. What are we going to do if this ever happens? So that, see, listen, the quality of your preparation determines the quality of your performance. You didn't perform properly because you didn't spend no time preparing. That's good, Bishop. On, Bishop. Listen, and Bishop Ramsey says this. Grace is not only unmerited favor, but unlimited power as well. God mm -hmm. will grace you for any situation you have to go through. Yes, sir. That's good. And listen to this. Not only is there grace, there's also an anointing. Yes. Oh, and yeah. if there's something that needs to change or be corrected because you are anointed for that person, your life can bring correction 
to something that they need to to stop. It may be uh, uh, like you mentioned, uh, uh, Brother Justin. Uh, they 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 may need something in their life healed. They need to be healed from something. Yes, because you love them unconditionally. They begin to see something, see things differently, and and your life brought about a healing to them. And you know what just happened? Now you just got the benefit of this beautiful person that the anointing in your life, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, manifested. Okay, yeah. two people coming together ought to have increase. There ought to be some increase. Come on, I, I, I so. Um, I thank God, me and my wife, we just uh, celebrated back in uh, June, uh, four years of marriage. Mm -hmm. And well, But I went back to our beginning. Uh, I believe that as you go, you, you learn more and you add more. Mm -hmm. So me and my wife started with two rules to our marriage. Mm -hmm. um, rule one, uh, it is a man's job to be inconvenienced. Point blank like period. <laughs> I said, it's, oh, it's my job as your husband to be inconvenienced. In other words, if if the trash can falls outside, I got it. Um, it. Or what have you? If if there's a uh, uh, the light bulb went out, I got it. The the inconvenient thing. See, it takes a lot to be the man. Uh, we we want to go by that title. I'm the husband. I'm the head. Heavy is the head. <laughs> Where's the crown? So that means anything that would inconvenience the house, that's on me. Mm -hmm. Any stress financially, that's on me. Mm -hmm. any, any stress globally, worldly, that's on me. Mm -hmm. so rule one was it was my job to be inconvenienced. Rule number two, it was her job to cover me in my inconvenience. Mm. Make sure that where I'm exposed, you cover me. Mm -hmm. And, and so what that did was that gave us design roles. And But guess what? As year one turned to year two, we began to add on that list. Mm -hmm. Because while that worked initially, as we got further in our path, as we begin to see more, mm -hmm. what our itinerary needed more. Yeah, and so discovery. Exactly. Because eventually I started to say, ow. Mm -hmm. And she started to say, well, you the man. <laughs> And I started to say, well, that hurts. Mm -hmm. and she said, well, you had said, well, you said. And so we had to add more. Mm -hmm. And I think what hurts us sometimes is, is we come in, as, as Stephanie said, these preconceived notions of what marriage and relationships are supposed to be. Because we watched Saved by the Bell back in the 90s. Or, <laughs> or we watched some other TV show. And and and, and, and don't get me wrong. I, I'm not going to say that, that he, Cliff, and Claire Huxtable don't exist. Mm -hmm. Right. But they're not the norm. Yeah. You know, or what have you. In some so, of these 2022 shows, that sure ain't right. That sure ain't right. It's not it. Know, <laughs> or what have you. The, the, the reality of it is, is that a marriage is a work in progress that will always be in progress. Well, I believe that love uh, cuts its own path. Mm. But until you come to know love, the path can't be cut. You'll always try to mimic something else or 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 create a false narrative, as you said. No, no, Love see, will be organic. It's like worship. Worship cuts its own path. Now see, I know mm -hmm. we're on the same level, Bishop. I just wrote this down. I said we have to learn how to quit using language that we stole from others to speak <laughs> how we really feel. Yeah. I yeah. can't take someone else's words all the time. I can't take someone else's vision. Uh, to uh, to miss our own Instagram, looking at other people's lives. Oh my! Oh my! And I want to speak to you from someone else's life. I don't know how they got there. I yeah. don't know if they're really there. Yeah, it might just be a show for the gram. So I, I can't speak to you from a language that that's not authentically mine. And you know something, just we got we got to talk about this. We're not throwing any stones, Lord have mercy. Bishop Ramsey knows my heart. Thank you, Bishop. Bishop Ramsey says this love covers a multitude of faults. Love doesn't expose, but covers. That's why Jesus has covered us so many times. He loves us greatly. That's why you got to comprehend the love of God. And then you'll know how to love someone else. And you'll know how you love as well. But I was going to say this. Even too many times, even in the church. I love the church. Mm. You hear me? 
marriages are not authentic. Mm. They are generic, even in the church. We have to come to the place where we are authentic, that we're not doing it just to save face. We're not doing it. Listen, God doesn't need professional Christians. He needs mm. people with Christ-like character. That's yes, sir. Amen. That means that, uh, and I, the Lord put this in my heart this morning, true character is what God says about you and people say about you when you're not in the room. And listen, this is absent the, the jealousy and the envy and the uh, competitors. I'm talking about authenticity attracts authenticity. Yes, sir. And if we can ever embrace that right there, I believe the law of attraction will kick in. If you'll just be patient, get in touch, know who you are, love God with all of your heart, all of your soul. Amen. Think right. Know that I'm healthy emotionally, that I'm not uh, um, attracting a predator. Someone that's going to prey on the weakness that is in my soul. Oh, yeah. Okay. And 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 listen to this. And I'm not needy. Hmm. I, I'm not attracting someone that really thinks that I, I'm needy or or you are needy. And 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 you've attracted someone that can meet the need in your natural sense, but not in the plan or the will of God. That's good. That that makes sense. And and these are all conversations that we have to have with with ourselves and with others, because I believe in my heart of hearts, God is a God of relationships. And he said to us, the word of God tells us, Jesus said, you will know that you are my disciples by the love that you show one towards another. Mm -hmm. If we can't even be good friends, why are we going to put the title of marriage on it, which is a man, a, a representation of what Christ's relationship is to the church. And so we, we got to be more responsible. We got to be more responsible and know how a thing is done. And there are marriages out there that, that can help. These conversations we can have that can help. Uh, we'll, we'll discover, come together and we'll discover uh, anything else we want to do. Let's figure out how, how to live. We'll, we'll find places to learn how to make money and all those types of things. Let's talk about how do we live? How do we, how do we get along with one another? How can I, I develop healthy relationships and friendships and, 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 um, and, and things of that sort so that we can have a healthy, wholesome environments, healthy, wholesome environments? Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes, sir. It's, it's definitely <laughs> needed. And, and here's my thing is because it starts again with with Y.O.U. It, it starts yeah. with with your relationship with God. I, I truly believe that um, if God is not the center of your agenda, you're always living in a, in a Thomas alternative society. Uh, what I mean by that, we know that uh, that Thomas refused to believe until he saw it and mm -hmm. he was still blessed. But, but we know the scripture tells us that had he just believed without seeing, there was more for him. Um, many of us just don't connect with God in the way that we should. And we continue to ask God to, to look for the world to fill God-sized voids. You know what I think we gotta do just, I mean, it just cut you off. I, th I think that we've got to talk about what that looks like. Yes. Because mm -hmm. we, we, we tell people to have a relationship with God, but we're really not teaching them how to have a relationship mm -hmm. with God. And yes. we're not modeling, modeling it properly. Mm -hmm. That was a tongue right. twister. Oh, you're um, right. You know, and, and, and we've got to be just really come to the place of, of getting in touch with truth. Um, you know, being honest mm -hmm. about where we are. That's not what that should look like. I did not handle that properly, you know, and stop making excuses because the immature continue to make excuses and repeat behaviors. 
Mm. And we can't keep perpetuating wrong behaviors because I believe that success is a part of our DNA. He did not create us to fail. He did not. Mm -hmm. At the best, we're going to learn. But we're not going to keep repeating behaviors. Does that make sense? We may not have got it right, sir. Come on, Dave. We might not have got it right. But I'm not going to keep repeating that behavior because if a man lacks wisdom, all he got to do is ask because he won't withhold it from him. Come on. So what you're, what you're revealing to me is I lack relationship with the God of wisdom. Mm-hmm. And I've got to be honest. I got to say, you know what? And somebody needs to be in your life that's not going to placate with you. That's I'm going to tell you that, you know what? You lack wisdom, sir. Uh, it ain't it ain't because she didn't fold the clothes and because you hadn't gained the wisdom on how to 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 um, to maximize you all's purpose for being together. Right. Is there even a person you ought to be together? I you understand what I'm saying, because you you're not you lack wisdom. You lack wisdom. I don't know if we're scared to tell that to someone. You know, I, I don't have a problem with telling a grown man, you acting like a little boy. Uh-oh. But that's not a grown man's behavior. You're that's right. The behavior right. of the immature. You're right, right, Bishop. And and the thing is, is unfortunately, it's because we we paint facades. I was oh. just telling my, my my wife this the other day, and, and I mean no disrespect to anyone that's listening. Again, we say this in love. But the phrase that, that just begins to irk me now is someone coming to a room or, or go on Facebook and say, oh, man, good to see you, King. Good to see you, my queen. Oh, and, my, we, my, my. And, 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 and I'm like, let's be real. Let's be honest. Let's First be all, real. Let's be real. Uh-huh. Uh, every, and, and again, I, I don't want to get in the left field. I said, but, but let's bring it in. Everyone's not a king. No, mm-hmm. they're not. Everyone's not a queen. No, they're and, not. And again, as speaking to a majority African American audience, even if you could go find your heritage all the way to <laughs> Africa, you may be surprised to find out you came from slavery. Mm-hmm. So, so, so let's be real. What's wrong with just being Justin? Because that part might expose who I am. Well, Look, if we'll get it right, just we're we're royal priesthood. Oh, That's come good. on. Come on. We're a royal priesthood. And if we all embrace our identity in Christ. Yes. Right. Okay. And then begin to take his yoke upon us and learn of him. I learn myself. But see, I I don't want that bishop because see if I'm a king, right? Uh, Whatever the king says is right. But you'll find out, though, you're going to end up being frustrated because you don't have no authority. Come you can on. have no more authority than you submitted to. Come on. Come on. You don't have no authority. So you're trying to function in something you have not been delegated the authority to function in. Because mm. someone lied to you and told you a falsehood. That's good. They got in touch with your emotions. You needed someone to tell you that because you did not go to the creator of all things and ask him, who am I? Why am I? Because of whatever whatever's going on and, and no one's there to tell you that. And so we, we gotta get away from a lot of these things. Uh and we gotta we gotta we've got to uh not be afraid. We've talked about this before. The kingdom is confrontational. But we gotta have healthy confrontation skills. I know we've talked about some things. We said some things that, uh, as you said, it just then just we're not saying these things to offend. We're not saying these things to to uh, other than to tell the truth in love, mm-hmm. because we cannot continue to repeat error because it gets passed down from generation to generation to generation, and it's causing us to 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 lose too many men and women uh that should be winning should be experiencing success one, one of the things i want to move on to is this is after friendship comes emotions mm-hmm. listen at this healthy emotions if you don't build a healthy friendship you can be angry in a relationship 
you can be bitter, you can be offended in the relationship. And then you think, well, if he put a ring on it, it's going to be okay. No, 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 no. You're skipping a gradient. Mm. You guys don't have no peace. You guys haven't discovered any purpose. You guys don't have problem solving skills. You guys can't even communicate with each other. Does that, does that make sense? Oh, you yeah. call it a toxic relationship. You understand? And someone feeds you a, a lie, you know, that, that marriage is going to correct that. Mm -mm, mm -mm. You're skipping a gradient. Your emotions are not healthy right now. Okay. You're not mm -hmm. glad when they come into the room. Hello. Hello. That's an indication something is off and you need to stop. You ought to be glad to see the person that you are destined to be with for come eternity. On. And it doesn't get old. And it don't get old. Hear me <laughs> now. It don't get old. It becomes more and more. Uh, Bishop Rancy will tell you, he, he loved him some Deborah. <laughs> Come on now. Oh, you understand what I'm saying? Yes, and they got some years under their belt. That's and she's good. smiling, he's smiling, glad to see one another. Does that make sense to you? Mm -hmm. Amen. And so uh when you're building relationships properly and your emotions are healthy, love increases. Okay. That's good. The grace increases, your anointing increases, everything increases. So once you get to that place and it's healthy, you then can move into a place of commitment. Mm. Okay. Now, a lot of times we skip a gradient, we get attracted and we want to consummate something, have sex, have intercourse. Yes, and sir. now we get all entangled with our souls. Uh-huh. Hello. And then we're trying to figure this thing out because we skip gradients. That's good. Okay. But if we built by attraction, cause of friendship, we've identified the purpose of this thing. It's glorifying God. It will glorify God. And everybody around us is going to benefit. I've increased. I'm being made better. He's being made better. She's being made better. If we have some offspring, they're going to be better. Amen. In society is better because we are together. Come on now. Our young yes, this community is better because we are together. Come on now. This neighborhood is better because we are together. We are not known for the neighborhood that the police show up at every other week. Come on, Alicia. Shut up now. Come on now. We we are Come not on. known for when I go to my employer. <laughs> I am a dysfunctional employee because of the chaos that is going on in my home. Come on here. Come on now. Your children are not going to school, disrupting the class because of the chaos that is in your home. Come on. That's real talk. Yes. Come on, yes, Come on now. Your child is not the one down the street making all the commotion because they're angry because of the lack of the attention that mm -hmm. they don't get from you in your home. Mm -hmm. This is the state of the union address, if we want to talk about this, is the state of our society. Yes, Ask an educator. Ask an educator. Yeah. Ask an employer. Yes. You try to employ anybody lately? Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Yes. Hmm? Come on here, Bishop. You put and this it's all on right the condition home. of the home. Mm. Do you hear me? It's the condition of the home. And, and 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 so we got to get back to 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 building proper relationship, beginning with God first, and then with one another. And and listen, when when we're healthy, we can then make commitments, and in commitment, uh, we can we can move forward to consummating a thing, uh, which could produce again increase, but yes. we skip gradients. We skip gradients, and then we try to go back and fix everything up. And and we've we've created a mess. We've created a mess. And again, listen to me. I'm not being judgmental. Did I know this when I first began? I did not. But it's by the grace of God. Yeah. Do you hear me? 35 years of marriage. Thank you, Lord. Four children. Yes. Seven grandchildren. Yes. Are you understanding? It's by the grace of God. 
but that's why I listen to me. I'm qualified to talk about it. I made the mistakes and God corrected me just. Amen. That's it. Come on now. My wife has gone home to be with be 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 with the Lord. But she would tell you, listen, we didn't get it right in the beginning, but we found we found love when we learned how to love and then we fell in love. Amen. Come on, and our love was greater at the end than it was in the beginning. That's on, true. Now. Does that make sense now? Yes. And in the middle, in the middle, just I found out I didn't know how to be a husband. I thought I did. Mm. But God had to teach me. Amen. He had to teach me. Process. It was a process, man. But listen, wisdom is gained one of two ways, mentors or mistakes. We're just going to not keep repeating them. We're not going to keep repeating them. We're not going to keep repeating them. Okay. But but I, I think going back to the other thing you said, I think that's what's hurting us when it comes to reaching out to people to letting them know what they should do or how mm -hmm. they should be is we have gotten away from, I say that we've moved from being a testifying society to a test of lying for a society because oh. what has happened is <laughs> I don't want you to know my marriage was rocky 30 years ago. <laughs> I don't want you to know she was fussing and cussing and, and, and she, would, she would sleep over here and I would sleep over there and I'd leave the house because, because again, that's not what we see on Instagram. Oh, right. Or whatnot. We want to show everyone that we've always been perfect. You know, mm -hmm. and so I would say that a good friend is someone that learned to take their mistakes and apply to friendship. You know, a, a, a good spouse, a good mate is someone that has taken their mistakes and made themselves better. And yeah, it's good come to on, take man. Those experiences and apply to themselves. If you if you were someone that could have never admit they've been wrong, you're a dangerous person. Yeah. Accept responsibility. Yeah. Good. You've never been wrong. You, 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 you've never made a mistake. Yeah. But but you but you've been in 15 relationships. Oh. And you the common denominator. <laughs> it's always them though. No, Stephanie, it was always them. They, they didn't appreciate who I was. They yeah. oh, and we have to be careful of this. You know, they didn't appreciate the anointing I have. Your anointing <laughs> eventually should have told you something too. Oh my! <laughs> uh, anointing, anointing. My my anointing speaks to me first. It does, sir. Then, Come on, help then, us. The conviction of my life. Help the, us. The anointing becomes the filter that allows me to speak to others. Help so us. If I tell you something that stung you, oh, it did something worse to me. <laughs> That's true. That's why you yeah. hear it softer than I did. Come on, so, man. You know we have to realize that if you if you really want these things, you have to really evaluate self. Yes, you do. At the end of the day, you can only receive what you are prepared to give. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's what we said. We said all of these things we're talking about is coming to me first. Mm -hmm. Listen, we're not charging. We're not we're not judging. We're not doing anything. We want everyone to be better. I want to be better. I work every day, Justin developing so that I can add value everywhere that I go, everywhere that I go, that I can be the best version of who God had on his mind when he created me and allowed me to enter into this. Mm -hmm. Amen. Uh, and, and so with that, I'm going to be attentive to that. I'm going to accept that responsibility. Amen. I'm going to accept that responsibility and and that's what we all got to do in a relationship, in a friendship. We got to all develop daily mm. to be a good friend. I got to get better, Jess. To be a good friend, I got to set responsibility. To be a good friend, if you tell me, you know, the way you said that to me yesterday, that, that kind of challenged me right there. I've got to say, I apologize. Yes, I'm not going to try to defend it. You're telling me what you experience and i was a part of what you experienced now if i really love like i should love then i'll say you know what i probably was a little little edgy 
You know, mm -hmm. I, I probably was. And please forgive me for that. Yeah. And now I'm going to be cautious. I'm going to be conscious of those types of things. Because you know one other thing that you just told me? You're a little different for me because that wouldn't have bothered me, but it bothers you. And because I value you, come on now, and because it doesn't bother me, doesn't mean it doesn't bother you. And so now I'm going to sacrifice and I'm going to, to, to um, honor and respect who you are. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. So, so these are things that happen during friendships. And if you can't get through those types of things, man, there's no way that you can go into talking about we're going to be together. Uh, well, uh, oh God, that, that thought just popped up in my mind. Come on, Bishop. Oh, come on. Woo -wee. This is the topic. We got to hit this. Okay. Is marriage just a accessory now? Or do we understand that it's a couple? Come Bishop, on, we, got, Bishop, we got three minutes left. Wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have to pick this up, man. Yes. Because if we got the wrong thing, if it's just a, an event, we just want to have a wedding. A me you too. Know? Is it a, oh, is it a me too? My, oh, my. God. My, 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 my. We out of time, y'all. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I'm not even. Mm -mm, mm -mm. No, sir. Y'all tune in next week. <laughs> <laughs> where, where Stephanie will lead us off and talking about uh no bitch great I mean but it is I think what what we did today uh I'll leave it alone is this is that we began the conversation of looking inward to solve these outward issues Absolutely. And, and that's the whole point is that we have to look inward you know yeah. uh, you you'll never be where God has designed for you to be in this world until you have established your seating your footing your anointing on the inside. Yeah. And, and and things as simple as a relationship won't work right if you were not set in the proper seat. And do you know the greatest success you can achieve is not how much money you made, but how many relationships that you have that are healthy. That's mm. good. Wow. That's the true definition of success to me. That's it. You know, because wealth is a byproduct of who you become, not what you have. My and when we become quality people, you're going to have some quality relationships. Mother Teresa was loved. Come on now. Mm. <laughs> Man, it, 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 Jesus is loved. Yes. Yes, sir. You know, so he's our model. He's, he's, he's who we were created in the image of and likeness of and who we're supposed to be conformed into the image of. Mm -hmm. So we got to quit being um, seduced by what the world calls success and get back to it. Man, my greatest my greatest success is, man, out of all the things I've done to date is the love that me and my wife walked in. Amen. I'm more proud of that than I am of anything else. Hi. We did a lot of things, but the thing we did the best was we loved each other. Yeah. And you got to know our story. Mm. Oh, man. You got to know our story, man. And it was the grace of God. Yeah. It was the grace of God. Amen. That's our time. Y'all take 30 seconds each and we got to get out of here. Go ahead, Stephanie. Go ahead and take us home. I was just going to say, man, marriage takes uh, maturity. It takes courage. And I love Genesis 1 and 8 where we have an understanding of why we should come together, be fruitful, multiply, and subdue. Uh, have dominion and the main thing is if we're talking about being married women i want y'all to read proverbs 31 but uh go on down in there to the end of the chapter Come on. Don't, just, don't just read that first couple of statements and uh stop talking about what you want your husband to do for you because in that proverbs 31 that woman was a worker come on come on <laughs> come on so we got to identify the role of our wives today and what a wife should look like from a biblical standpoint. From a biblical standpoint. That's Amen. it. That's it. <laughs> That's our time, guys. We got to get out of here. I love y'all. Please share, share, share. Come back. Join the conversation. Thank you, Trace, for being with us and, and uh, Crystal and Bishop Ramsey and everybody. We love y'all. Share it. God bless you. Have a great night.